Hi there, let's talk sports fans. I've got Ted from Draft Punk Podcast today to talk a West Ham Leeds match preview. Thanks for coming in again, Ted. No worries, thanks for having me. Um, so um, before we get started, everyone, if you haven't already do so, please check out Ted's podcast, any NFL fans out there who um, want to get into, well, they do discuss the NFL season, but particularly into the draft candidates and so forth. And the link it will be down below. Um, so, Ted, if we go into um, the West Ham Leeds match from an outside point of view, would you say their last run of games has probably been not as good as when they started out the season? They almost were playing above themselves. Would that be fair? Um I don't think we're playing uh, above ourselves. I, I think with Leeds right now, we, we tend to streak. We'll, we'll have a, a, a nice run, and then we'll we'll go we'll drip we'll drop down a bit, you know. Um, and recently, the last four or five games, we haven't been playing very well. I'd, I, I'd probably more attribute that to we've had quite a few injuries, and especially to key players as well. Um, we, we're a completely different team when Calvin Phillips isn't playing, and, and you can just see that straight away. Um, whether it's Stroke or uh, Shackleton or or someone else trying to take his place, they're just they're not the same player. He's he's the uh, he's the heartbeat of that team. Yeah, I mean um, the way Bielsa plays is there's only so many players who can play the way he wants to play. So any side struggles if you have to rely on one of the backups to come in for periods but um, I think the way he plays um, that's not necessarily helpful to maybe some of your utility players. No um, I mean the, the thing with Phillips is because Bielsa plays the high line and he plays a high tempo and likes to keep possession of the ball then we need a central defensive midfielder who you can rely on to keep it tight just in front of the back four or three, depending who we're playing with. Because it's, especially when we're playing the four, because the wing backs like to go and join the attack. So we need someone who is confident at the back. But then also you lose his creativity in spreading the ball around as well. I don't think he gets acknowledged as much as he should for that, how well he passes the ball. And it goes under the radar a wee bit. Um, going back to a point that you mentioned about um, players not adapting to Bielsa's system, I, th I think in in retrospect, any player can play under Bielsa because he gets them to play the way he likes to, to play football. Now, obviously, that will help because he can scout the players and he can find the players that will fit into his system. But we don't struggle as much if other areas are we've got reserves in place. So, uh, if, for example, uh, Rodrigo's been out for quite a long time now, but then we've, we've been playing uh, Klitsch in a bit more of an advanced role or Tyler Roberts, who I'm not a big fan of, but he has sparked, he's played OK. And the team's performance hasn't really suffered because of that. Um, and if, if we look at the Bielsa team, in, the, the Leeds team in general, I mean, it's right now with the injuries we've got it is literally the championship team with Rafinha added on the right hand side and don't get me wrong he's special but what we've done so far is actually I think is, is quite an achievement that we're we're 11th at the moment and uh, you know we've we've got a few reserves in place and it's basically the team that he brought up so it, it's it's an achievement this year I, I think some of us would have liked to have seen us maybe in maybe top six or seven because the manager is is that good um, maybe that's a bit high. Uh, but I, I think if we get a decent run going and we don't have any more injuries, then that might actually be achievable come the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, sort of um, where they are, any side coming up, no matter the season, would take that. And I didn't mean it as a knock that they oh, no. were sort of going on high. But I think any side that comes up 
your fir for your first season, you've got to aim at even if you're one pl place above the relegation zone. That's a good season. So, so I believe they're 11th at the moment. If they finished 11th, that would far exceed what they should aim to do. So that's all the head schedule, if that makes sense. Yes, and, and, and you're right. Um, I, th I think with Bielsa, you're on a limited time clock as well, though. Yeah. Um, he, he doesn't hang around at clubs uh, as long as other managers. You know, he has a tendency to just, just you know, he, he says he's had enough and he'll go and find another job somewhere. I, I quite like, I, I think that he enjoys the culture here and I think we might keep him for a while. But the danger is if we don't capitalise when we've got him, If it, say, for example, he leaves at the end of this season, we're suddenly a championship team again with, with you know, three or four signings who are good players, but... I would see a struggle massively the following season. So it, it does revolve around the manager. And it, if, if we can keep him, then we've got a good chance. Maybe in the summer, get a, a couple more uh, decent starting 11 players and a, a, a few squad players. And we, we could quite easily contend for Europe next year, I think. Yeah, I agree. I mean, my point, I look at him as a bit like Mourinho, that he sort of stays for two or three years and, uh, either he gets fed up or the relationship says, but I think that's, I would imagine he's an interesting man to work with if you're a director at a football club. I would imagine he likes things done very much his way. That's just my gut feeling. I think you're right. It certainly comes across when you hear about his training regimes and how he has the team, uh, how he has them before matches. He has them doing community service. You know, it, it, he certainly likes things done his own way. And you're not wrong about the, you know, the director of football, the chairman, what have you. I mean, it's it's not going to be boring for him, that's for sure. I mean, they'll constantly be on their, the edge of their seats wondering what he's going to do next. Um, and hopefully the, his, uh, his future will be that he wants to stay with Leeds for a while. Yeah, I mean... The way he sets up is interesting because when they, even in their first game against Liverpool, I had concerns and I still have to a certain degree how sustainable it is that they almost attack all the time and they sort of have made it work. But I do worry if sides sort of sides adapt to the way you play so I do still have a bit of concern about that even though they are doing well the best way I can describe the way he plays is he almost plays like he's playing FIFA in everyone's attacking all the time uh-huh and to a degree you're right um I, I think the way that he does it is very clever as well um, it, you know, it's, it's not just a case of we put our back four on the halfway line and just squash the other team into their half. Um, you know, he is very clever and he, he's obviously an accomplished manager. He, he looks at the uh, the one-on-one one -on -one matchups and uh, he makes sure that we dominate in certain areas of the pitch. Um, the, the problem with his uh, system, especially at the moment because we haven't got the most accomplished squad, is if the players don't turn up, then we get found out very quickly. Um, and we'll get uh, we'll get beat easily, even by mediocre teams. Um, you know, we, we've we've shown ourselves well against some of the bigger sides because it's literally been like a like a tennis match, you know, going from end to end. But I mean, a good example that they're not a mediocre side, but you know, like like a Leicester. Leicester are a good side, um, but they basically our first match against them, they beat us four one in the end. But it was a case of we we held the ball nicely. Um, but we just didn't have that killer instinct. And I, I think the, the the stats at the end of the game, I think we were close to up to 70% of the possession, but I think we had like six shots. And it was basically because we couldn't break Leicester down because we just, we, we couldn't pass well. And we do have games where we just go off the boil. And funny enough, our last couple of games have been like that. Um, and to a degree, the, the game against West Ham, the first one where you, you beat us 2-1, was very similar, I thought. We, we didn't really turn up. I mean, you guys played very well. And we experienced something that we've never really seen in the Premier League so far, where um, it was almost like not 50-50 the possession, but it won't have been far off. And the, the, the territorial advantage, we weren't stuck in your half-hour game. It was a case of, you know, it was it was very end-to-end. -end. It, was, it was an interesting game. 
and we didn't deserve to win. West Ham really did deserve the, the victory, but um, I'd like to think that we could maybe give a better account of ourselves against John Mundy. Um, yeah, I mean, um, West Ham fee match was a bit limited back then because I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that's when Hilaire was at West Ham and leading the line. And I don't really want to get into that because that's a very decisive figure, uh, subject with West Ham fans. But West Ham are a completely different side with Antonio in the side. He does so much in Moyes' system that Hilaire wouldn't. He tracks back. He will chase everything down. So um, I expect us to set out very similar to how we did in the first game, but Antonio will give your defence a bit more to think about. I, th I think that the type of striker Antonio is as well, it's the type of striker we don't uh, tend to defend very well. You know, he's quick, he's good with his feet. We're much better against uh, sides that play like a, like a bigger, like a target man. Um, and I, I quite like Antonio. You guys were going to get rid of him at one point, weren't you? And then I think that yeah. maybe put, pulled out at the last minute. And that's that's proven to be a, a, a great decision because he's played really well since since the transfer window. Yeah, I mean, he is an actual striker, but we technically ain't got striker at the club. But he is um, certainly holding his... He's got a very good record. It's just injuries with him you're almost a race against time. He's going to get three to four injuries a season. He just is. So that's why if he ever does get an injury, particularly this time of year, because it's his sort of hamstrings one issue, they're almost held together by sellotape. So <laughs> um, in this cold weather, especially on a Monday night, you do have concerns. And... They decided not to sign a striker after San Hilaire. Yarmolenko was their backup plan, which he weren't much of a backup plan, but he's out for probably the season. So now if something goes wrong, Jesse Lingard's playing up front. Crikey. He's not a striker, is he? I know he's got attacking tendencies, but that's not what you want to, uh, to, to end up with. But you you got Thomas Suchek, haven't you? I I know I mean he's a yeah. midfielder, but he could uh, spell a bit up from couldn't he? Well, you do sort of get think he could because he's good in the air and he'll get goals, but he's more someone what will is better coming into the box, say there's a loose ball and he strikes it coming onto it rather than his back to goal, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So um he is certainly a goal for it. And I, I actually think a key battle will be in midfield with Rice and Suchek against your midfield. I think that's where the game's going to be run because if Rice can assert his dominance, then that will help Antonio um, get forward and also push you back a bit and as we all know you like to go forward you're not wrong I mean if the game is played through the middle of the field we've got problems because where we're most efficient is down the width down the wings um, players like like Rafinha who we, we touched on and Jack Harrison if he comes back to form he's had a bit of a dip recently but he's a quality player um, so if, if we can try and keep it wide, then I think we've got a better chance of giving you a game. I, 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 but I, I agree with you there. If, if it's uh, if the, the battle's in the middle of the park, we might struggle. I mean, we have got a, a decent middle uh, midfield, but it all depends, again, on injuries. I mean, it's reported that both Phillips and Rodrigo could be back for Monday, which is a massive boost. Whether they're 100% fit, I don't know. Um, but that would be a massive boost for us. Um and then, I mean, I, I'm a big Mateus Click fan. I, I think some Leeds fans are getting a bit impatient with him because he's not scoring the goals that he did in the Championship. But I think what he actually does, he's unheralded for some of the, especially some of the runs he makes off the ball and some of the passes he makes here are, are excellent, very clinical. So, uh, I mean, we have got a good midfield, but I, I agree. Rice especially, I'm a big fan of. 
Um, I'm, the battle I'm looking forward to is uh, is Cresswell against our wingers. I, I think that because because our wingers they tend tend to to switch a lot, he'll have to face both of them at uh, at some point. And Aaron Cresswell's a, a quality player. That'll be fun to watch. Yeah, I mean he almost had a foot out the door at the start of the season, but Moyes has actually been quite smart. He first played him when we played the back five as the left centre back, and that's. Trust me, he's a better player there than left back just because um, if you put him there, sides don't tend to mark the centre-back, obviously. So he would get the loose balls and ping the balls forward. And that was ideal for the likes of Antonio to run on to. Mm-hmm. So, he, he, he does seem to have a good eye for, for picking out a, a deep pass going over the top. Um, he's, he's one of those guys that's that's gifted, a bit like Phillips actually. He's similar, yeah. where they're, they're, they're gifted at being able to ping 20, 30 yard balls over the top and finding the, you know, putting it on a sixpence. Um, he's, he's a good quality player and he's young as well as Cresswell, isn't he? Uh, well, yeah, he, and he's actually he got confidence from playing that left centre back and now at left back, he's actually playing very well. I mean, what West Ham tend to do. The Moyes knows he hasn't got that um, the legs to come back. So what Rice does is he has the intelligence to, when he goes forward, Rice drops back, almost playing as an extra centre back until Chris Well comes back, and that is ideal. That's why a lot of people look at Rice but don't realise what he does for the team because. He sort of plays almost three different positions. Absolutely. It, it, it sounds exactly the same situation that Calvin Phillips is in, because like when Cresswell goes up, we have the same when, when we have our um, fullbacks, Aylin, Alioski, or whoever is playing uh, as the wing backs. When they go up, that's what exactly what Phillips does. He drops back, but then also like Rice, he also is able to spread the, spray the ball around as well. They're, they're very similar, those players. And it's a shame because as an England fan as well, that they're, they're two players who play the same position. I mean, you kind of want to spread the, the talent around the England team. And, you know, in a few years' time, because they're both relatively young, we're, you know, they're going to be battling each other for uh, for that position as the, uh, the holding midfielder. Yeah, I mean, it's quite a subject with West Ham fans because... People do compare them a lot, but I look at them as different players. Although they play the same position, they do different things. So I can, on occasion, see them playing together, but I think it depends on the match situation, what one you play. Mm-hmm. No, no, I can see that. It's similar to when Lampard and Gerrard apparently couldn't play together. Yeah, um, but... I do agree Rafinha and Harrison will be key on Monday's match. I I like Harrison a lot. I know you said he's had a different form, but I think there is a good premiership player in there, but I think maybe he's took longer to climatise to the step up in the to the champions from the Championship to the Premiership, then maybe we thought he would, given he had a very good game against Liverpool opening day. Possibly. He has played well um, on in general throughout the season. It's just the last, like, I'd say even five or six matches, he's, he's almost looked like he's a bit tired, which wouldn't surprise me because what the Leeds players have to go through playing under Bielsa, I can imagine there's a bit of fatigue hits around this time of the year. They're, 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 you know, they're... They've been run ragged all season and it's getting towards the end now. And I could see him maybe it's just because he's he's had a bit of a bit of a rest now. And I'm hoping he'll be back for Monday because he, he didn't play uh, last week and he was pulled off week before after half time. So I, I wonder if that is actually the case. They they're aware that he's maybe a bit fatigued and they just need to give him a bit of a blow. So hopefully he'll be back on Monday because I think we'll need them playing you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. I do like the thing a lot. I actually think he's your best player. A lot was made of Rodrigo coming in, but I actually think the thing has had a bigger impact. And um, I do 
think he's going to be even better next year in the second year in the Premiership. I, I couldn't agree more. I, he was the steal for us. So we, we made a few transfers. Like you say, Rodrigo was one of them and a couple of centre-backs who have been unlucky with their uh, injuries. But, I mean, Rafinha, for the money we paid, I think we paid £17 million for him, which sounds a lot for a relatively unknown guy from the French League. But I mean, he's shown that that signing was, was an, an excellent one. Um, I mean, when you watch him, I mean, obviously the, the talent's there with his feet and how quick he is. But... The way he sprays the ball around, like most players in a Bielsa system, you need to be able to pass well, and he does that. Um, but he's, he's not one of these just, you know, your fancy uh, wingers who, you know, doesn't like to get stuck in. I mean, he really does. He, he goes into every tackle. And then when we haven't got the ball, he's flying back to help the defenders like you need to, again, in a Bielsa system. So I, there's very little I could say that he has that it's a weakness. Um, and I agree with you because he's young and it's his first year in the Premier League. He'll only get stronger. And I have a feeling in the summer, I think the big clubs are going to be sniffing around at him. But um, one uh, battle what I do think will be key is him against Soufal because um, Soufal's integral to the way West Ham play. And you look at him coming in for five million and that would be up there for value for any signing in, in the last year in the Premiership because he attacks, he defends, and he lays everything on the line. I mean, when we played Aston Villa, he marked Jack Grealish out of the game, and to be honest, Grealish was acting a bit like a sport kid. By the like end of it, yeah, I know. What I mean, I West Ham fans don't get the love because Aston Villa come here with a lot of hype about their start to the season, but the press makes a lot of how many free kicks Jack Grealish get. But what they don't tell you is Aston Villa, and particularly him, die for everything. So yes, he does get fouls, but they're not. He's not actually getting fouled. So. Um, it actually made West Ham lock like, says dive in all game, and towards the end of the game, they probably should have had the penalty. But the one time when they would normally dive, they didn't, and then missed out on the penalty. So there was a bit of justice there. Yeah. We we played them recently, we got beat one nil by them, but to be quite honest, they didn't deserve it. Um, we, we we dominated the game from start till finish. The problem is when we had one of our off days where we just we don't seem to be able to put in that final ball into the box, and then they just they hit. They had one lucky attack. I, I think they only had six shots all game and managed to score with one of them. Um, I mean, Greenish wasn't playing, and the, the, the media made a big deal out of that. Oh, Greenish isn't playing, but they, they failed to mention we were six men short that game as well. So. I, um, I, I don't rate them very highly, and you're absolutely right about the diving, um, especially Grealish. Um, every single opportunity they, they were in, the refs here trying to get a foul here or there and throwing themselves on the floor. And um, At one point, we got, they, they were given a free kick because one of our lads took a shot off the box, uh, outside the box, and the, the defenders cleared it with his head. All right, it was a powerful shot, but he's gone down, feigning he's blooming knocked out or something. And then uh, as soon as the rest blow on the whistle, 26 later, he's up and jogging about. I thought, well, that's typical, isn't it? Because, I, mean, I mean, we had the ball outside the box, so really we should have played on. But, um, yeah. yeah, they were looking for every situation to try and, you know, get a free kick here and there or what have you. And it's a threat. So, Shufau had them and got so bad, he switched flanks, which he generally don't tend to do. So, there was definitely a moral victory in there. Moore is actually... Out for Smith, he made the adaption of uh, took Bowen out, which a lot of fans were head stretching and brought Ryan Fredericks in. And he sort of almost played two full backs to counteract Greedish because if you stop Greedish, you stop Aston Villa, and it worked very effectively. So you've got to give him props there. Yeah, it's true. I mean, he's a talented player. Um, he's Grealish, but um, he he's kind of his worst enemy, especially with the diving and then the attitude, because you're right, he does behave like a spoiled brat. 
Um, but you're not wrong. He's, he's a very talented player. Um, and I, I enjoy watching him play. I just don't enjoy the antics he gets up to on the pitch. Yeah. Um, sort of just to finish up, where do you see, do you have any predictions for the game? For me, I'm sort of 50-50 because on paper, based on form, West Ham should maybe just win, but there's doubts if Fabianski will play he picked up uh, I think it was a groin strain and didn't play last game which Darren Randolph is uh, about as good a backup as you can get but he is mm -hmm. a backup and I do have doubts if he could cope with the amount of attacks Leeds would have it's interesting you mentioned Fabianski because um, in the papers today there's the uh, they're reporting that you're sniffing around our keeper Melier as a replacement yeah. for Fabianski because he's uh, his contract ends at end of the year does Fabianski doesn't it and he's he's, he's getting on a yeah. bit now is he is he mid thirties something like that he's like thirty seven I'm pretty yeah. sure uh, which yeah. he he actually has had a good season last season he never really recovered from but the last few year last few games he's actually been back to the level what we saw him about a year ago but the problem is it runs out they say oh we'll deal with it they first they said we'll deal with contracts in January but now it is into March and obviously it runs out in May so it makes you wonder I mean I wouldn't be adverse to them looking at a goalkeeper just because of his age no knock on his play but when he does fall off, he's going fall off and he's taking more injuries and taking more time to recover. But the problem is who to bring in. There was also rumours earlier in the week they might go for Ramsdale of Sheffield United, which I don't want no part of that. I would rather even play Randolph rather than him. But uh -huh. they do need to find someone, ideally, someone what's going to be around for the next five years well melio would be that because he's a, he's in his early 20s um the, the the problem with that is i don't see us letting him go cheaply you'd have to offer us a hell of a lot of money uh, because we, we, we've obviously decided he's the future of the club at goalkeeper and he's played very well this year he, he's had a couple of uh, a couple of errors but all in all, he's actually played very well in his first season in the Premier League. So the, the future's bright for the kid. Um, so I think if you were to try and prize him away from us, it would have to be for a lot of money. And I, mean, uh, I, I don't know if he's worth paying that right now. I wouldn't put too much stock in reports because just this week they've been linked to Ramsdale. They've been linked to Henderson at United. They've been... Uh, linked obviously Melier and they've also been linked to the Savia Prague goalkeeper um, and that's just to name a few so I think they will do something in goalkeeping but I don't know the Henderson thing scares me as well because Manchester United are said to want Rice so you think to yourself will they say will give us Rice and we'll give you Henderson and Lingard. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, I mean, I, I think probably Rice is worth a bit more than that. You'd hope you'd get a bit of uh, money on the side as well. Well, as yeah, are you deal, could, but, uh, supposedly, you don't lose him, do you? Supposedly they want 20 million for Henderson and the same for uh, Lingard, so... Wow. I think it's inevitable. Yeah, it's inevitable that Rice goes. You could convince me. I think if you sold him straight up, the lowest you could convince me to sell him is eighty million, which is sounds a lot, but sort of what he does is far greater value. Like I say, he plays a couple positions that. I can understand in this financial climate if a club don't want to pay that. But at the same time, these Champions League clubs are saying we want to base their midfield round him, but then saying, oh, he's not worth that. But why do you want him to be part of the base of your side 
if you're not going to pay the price. So it's one or the other, in my opinion. No, absolutely. And especially the position he plays. Again, it's exactly the same with Phillips. The position they play, that is the position you based your team around. They're the link from the defence into the midfield. And the type of players that they are, they are the, the player you base your whole team around. You know, you, you start there and you work your way out. Um, and how good Rice is. Um, I could see 80 million. I think that that I'd be happy with that if 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 I was buying him for that. If if uh, Leeds don't have that money, but if we did, I, I I would be happy with that fee. And I think probably West Ham fans would probably be happy with that as well. Yeah, we sort of see it as 80 million's really the limit. As some people say, obviously, the thing is clubs want to tie up because if he has a good European Championship that price goes up so mm-hmm. uh, that's why the West Ham, the West Ham owners are very trigger habit selling but also this they've always to hold out until after the European Championship because his price will only go up it won't go down if he was if Manchester United did want him and they wanted to include Henderson and Lingard, you could convince me to do 40 million plus those two players. That is what I would call a fair price for all parties. West Ham can come out of it and say they've got some because they've got two people to be based their side around, and 40 million you could get two players to replace Rice because that's what you're going to have to do. You can't replace him with one player because of what he does. An added bonus with him is he's never been injured. So mm-hmm. he plays every minute of every game and not many players do that. No, 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 you're absolutely right. But um, going back to the game, what do you feel? Are you confident or do you think it's a margin game? What it could go either way. I, I don't think I'm confident. I, I don't think we're playing well enough at the moment for me to be confident. And I think as a Leeds fan in general, you're never confident. Um, however, so I'm hoping, like you say, that it's a marginal game and we might squeak it because I think right now, I think West Ham are a better side than Leeds are. Um, if we can win in certain areas of the field, like like the, the width, like in the wings, then maybe we've got a shot. Um, and if we can control the pace, get an early goal maybe, and then control the pace, then maybe we could come away from you guys with with a, maybe a win. But I think realistically, I think a draw we'd be happy with. We'd come away from from uh, you guys with with a draw. That would be uh, that would be fine. Yeah, I mean it's going to be interesting. I would actually, I know Leeds put a lot of pressures on defence. I'm confident of our defence soaking up anything they can throw. I know Ogbon is currently out, but Dawson's leading the line well and the fullbacks are helping out a lot. But it's just the Fabianzi thing. What is the sort of game changer, if you will? Your goalkeeper's so essential. So without him, I could see it being maybe one all draw or certainly one goal in it. Without him, I would have been saying we could even win 2-0. That's how much he changes it. Yeah, I, it's not very often we don't score. So if, if I was to say, if you were going to win, then maybe I'd, I'd give us maybe at least one goal, maybe 2-1, one, 3-1, one, something like that. Um, but I, I'll go with a, with a score draw. We'll say 2 all. So, so it's an entertaining yeah. game on a Monday night as well. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting. Um, I guess that pretty much wraps it up. But I'd love to have you on again in the future. Um, probably next time it'll be maybe talk the Vikings draft. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or the, the draft in general, I'd be happy to come on and have a chat with. That's coming up soon, end of April. We're, we're uh, on our podcast. We're, we're running down basically to, to the event. It's... Uh, there's a lot of work going in at the moment doing mock drafts for all the different teams and and looking at all the prospects so so yes yeah, so again if, if anyone's got any uh interest in the nfl and especially the college game then then give our podcast a go 
and uh thanks for coming in and i guess until next time let's talk sport fans